This video is brought to you by TrainSignal, your home for IT training products. Welcome to TrainSignal. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and this is the Network Components video. And as you can see by the topics on the whiteboard, we're going to talk about just about every different kind of device we've got in our network today. Because frankly, as you can see just from this list, we've got a lot of them. There are a few misconceptions about what a couple of them do, and you may not have gotten to work with switches and routers uh, in person yet. So we're not just going to talk about the theory, what the devices do. We're going to actually walk through some processes where the uh, switch builds its layer two address table, how the router builds its layer three address table. And we're going to draw the lines between what these devices do and what they don't do, because it's equally important to know what something can't do as to what it can do. And speaking of somewhat limited devices, let's segue into a discussion of hubs and repeaters. Now, both of these devices work at the physical layer of the OSI model. They're at layer one. And as you know, at layer one, what have we got? We've got ones and we've got zeros. We don't have any frames, we don't have any packets, we don't have any segments. All we have is a stream of ones and zeros going across that wire because that's the only thing the electric wire understands. So they're not going to do any kind of traffic directing at all. They're not going to do any switching. They're not going to do any routing. They're not going to do any path determination, path filtering, anything like that. The one thing they can do is strengthen the signal. And in another video in this course, we're going to talk quite a bit about segment length maximums with different kinds of cable. And what happens to any electrical signal that travels is it's going to weaken gradually as it gets further and further and further away from the source. It's much like listening to a radio station in your car. And you're driving out of town and you're listening to the radio and it usually happens during your favorite song. But sooner or later, the signal just keeps weakening and weakening and weakening to the point where it's breaking up. You really can't listen to it anymore. And it may actually start mixing with these with a, another radio station in another city because they use the same frequencies. Well, that's called attenuation. It's the gradual weakening of a signal. And what hubs and repeaters can do is take an incoming data signal and make a clean, strong copy of the original. And again, otherwise, this signal would just keep on getting a little weaker and a little weaker until the point where it became unusable. Now, realistically, repeaters are just about extinct in today's networks. They're just about gone. One major problem is they only had one, import and one input port and one output port to begin with. So that kind of limits our options right there. And naturally, that meant that we could only regenerate a single data signal. Now, hubs are really just multi-port repeaters. I know you'll hear about smart hubs and that kind of thing, although you don't really even hear about those anymore. But at its base, a hub is a multi-port repeater. And those multiple ports do give them some value in today's networks. By using a hub to connect four PCs, as we've done here, we're left with one collision domain. Any data that is sent by any one of these hosts is subject to colliding with data sent by another host. And we've talked about collision domains and broadcast domains in other videos, and we, uh, we keep revisiting that. But it's so important to remember which devices can break these domains up and which ones can't. Hubs don't break anything up. Repeaters don't bring it, break anything up as far as broadcast and collision domains go. Now, using a hub here results in one collision domain, and it also results in one broadcast domain because a broadcast sent by any of these hosts is going to be heard by every other host, and we really can't do anything about that. That's the default behavior of a switch as well, but as we've discussed in another video, we can use virtual LANs to break up collision domains. So that's really about all there is to say about hubs and repeaters. You know, it's a layer one device, doesn't break up a collision domain, doesn't break up a broadcast domain, and their main purpose in today's networks when they are used is to strengthen the signal and avoid attenuation. So having talked about hubs and repeaters long enough, let's take a look at bridges and switches. This video is brought to you by TrainSignal, 
Network Admin's number one choice for professional IT training, where you'll find videos on Microsoft, Cisco, Linux, CompTIA, and more. Come visit us today at www.trainsignal.com.